So a competitive antagonist is any pharmacologic antagonist that competes with the binding of agonist at the binding site. If we add more and more and more agonist, eventually the agonists will win the competition and reach maximal effect. So here, my competitive antagonist has bound to the agonist binding site on the receptor. And if I add more and more and more and more and more agonist, if I add enough agonist, well then the agonist will win the competition with the competitive antagonist and activate the receptor. So here again is an agonist dose response curve denoted in blue. This curve right here, the white curve, is the agonist dose response curve with the addition of competitive antagonist. So if I take the solution and I add a fixed dose of competitive antagonist and then plot out my agonist dose response curve again, we'll notice with the competitive antagonist in solution, it takes more and more and more drug to achieve effect. But if I add enough drug, I will eventually overcome that competitive antagonist and reach maximal effect. If we use a competitive antagonist as a drug, the body might have the ability to add more and more and more hormone to overcome the effect of the competitive antagonist. And something that I wanted you to see is that the dose of drug required to achieve half of maximal effect for no competitive antagonist in solution is marked right here in blue. So with competitive antagonist in solution, it takes more dosage of medication to achieve half of maximal effect. A non-competitive antagonist is any pharmacologic antagonist that binds to a site on the receptor other than the agonist binding site. No matter how much agonist we eventually add, we cannot win the competition to reach maximal effect. So here's my non-competitive antagonist. It's binding to the receptor in a place other than the agonist binding site. And because the non-competitive antagonist has deactivated the receptor, adding more and more and more agonist is not going to overcome the competition. So that's why the agonist dose response curve in the presence of non-competitive antagonist looks different. Here again is my normal agonist dose response curve. But if we add non-competitive antagonists to the solution and then plot out the same graph, well, as we add more and more and more agonist, we're not able to reach maximal effect because the agonist cannot win the competition with the non-competitive antagonist to reach maximum effect. But something that's very interesting to note with the agonist dose response curve in the presence of non-competitive antagonist is the EC50 is still the same. The dose of drug required to reach half of maximal effect with no non-competitive antagonist is the same dose of the drug required to reach half of maximal effect in the presence of non-competitive antagonist. It's important to have a handle on these concepts so you understand why non-competitive antagonists are being developed more and more as therapeutic medications because the body is not able to overcome their effects.